All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the five things that I believe you need to know on your private boat to catch more fish when you're offshore fishing. When those albacore, bluefin, yellowfin, dorado, yellowtail all show up offshore, these are the five things that I believe in that you need to know and you need to have on your boat if you want to be successful in Southern California. First, number one, the most important thing, and I tell all my clients when they call, the number one thing you got to have, and it's super important, is you got to have a bait tank. You have to, have to, have to, have to, have to have a bait tank. It has to be round or oval in shape, not a square box, round or oval in shape so that the bait can swim in one direction against the current. And you have to be able to hold as much bait as you possibly can. If you look at the boat that I run here, the Wild and Sack, the bait tank holds 360 gallons of water. We hold approximately 20 scoops of bait. And I know it's hard to believe, but we still run out of bait. It's got to be important for you to have a bait tank on your boat. Try to put it dead center in the middle of your deck. When you put it on the swim step or on the back of, it stops all the flow on the boat. Nobody, only one guy at a time can get a bait when the bait tank's on the back of the boat. And plus, all the movement on the boat stops while the guy tries to get a bait out of the bait tank. So, if you can get away with it, dead center of the deck on any boat from a 17 foot boat to an 80 foot boat. Dead center of the cockpit is always the best place to have your bait tank. Always, always, always try to make sure you have as much bait as you possibly can when you're going offshore because there's no bait offshore. Once you get out there, you're pretty much stuck and all the fish offshore are always looking for something to eat. So you're gonna need to chum besides the fact that you're gonna need to go through a phenomenal amount of bait if you're gonna catch any tuna or dorado. While you're going through this bait, you're also gonna be chumming. So you're gonna start going through even more bait. I see guys all the time go to the bait barge and ask for a half a scoop and they're gonna go offshore. I don't even understand that. Why are you gonna go way out there, 40, 50 miles off the beach, or let's say the albacore show up and you have to go 100 miles off the beach, you're gonna wanna have at least three scoops of bait every time you go out there. So make sure, number one, Bait, 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 bait. Bait's the most important thing. You gotta have bait. It doesn't matter what else you have on the boat. If you don't have bait, you're kinda out. If you're going offshore. I'm not talking about fishing. Calico bass on the plastic lures along the beach. We're talking about offshore fishing for bluefin, yellowfin, dorado, yellowtail. All the stuff that lives offshore, you've got to have bait to throw, you have to have bait to chum, you have to have bait to fish with. It's super important to bait, bait, bait. That's number one. Number two, before you leave to go offshore, make sure you know your electronics. Make sure you know how your radar works because many, many times you'll go offshore, you'll get out there for 15, 20 miles and the fog will roll in on the beach and you can't get back. Make sure you know how the radar works so that you can get it back to the harbor and back to your dock, back to the safe harbor. Make sure you know how to use your GPS. Don't get on your boat in the morning and start to run offshore and then try to figure out how to use the GPS. How does this thing work? Well, the last thing you wanna do on the day where you get to go fishing is practice doing anything. You wanna be dialed in so that when you get offshore, you're ready to catch fish, not to try to learn how to use your electronics. And the third piece of electronics that's super important to know how to use is your fish finder. The fish finder is actually called a fatometer. Why is it called a fatometer? Because the depth of the ocean is measured in fathoms. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you've heard of the 209 or the 181. The 181 is 181 fathoms. The 209 is 209 fathoms. What is a fathom? A fathom is six feet. So, when I get on your boat, the first thing I'm gonna do is take your fish finding device, your fatometer, and I'm gonna take it off of auto, and I'm gonna put it on manual. I wanna be in charge, and so do you, of what you're looking at. When you're looking at your machine, take it off of the auto. You do not want the machine to dictate what you're gonna look at. For example, you get offshore, you're out on the 209, it's 209 fathoms deep. If you have your machine on auto, it's looking for the bottom in 209 fathoms. We don't care what's on the bottom when we're offshore fishing. What we care about is that first 
level from zero to 120 feet. That's what we care about. We don't care about anything else on our private boat because we don't have enough bait to bring any fish up. Like the sport boats, they can look at fish at 30 fathoms and they can set on it long enough and keep chumming and the fish will come up. But on our private boat, if it's from zero to 120 feet or a lot of your newer machines go zero to 150, the older machines go zero to 120, that's the range you're gonna wanna keep them on. You're always going to want to have it at that because you're not looking for anything deeper because you're not going to catch it. Plus, if you see a big giant school of tuna on auto and the, it's looking for the bottom in 3,000 feet of water, it's going to look like a speck of dust on your screen. But if you have that screen at 0 to 120 or 150, a school of tuna is going to look like my hand. It's going to be a big upside down U shape on your screen. It's going to look like that on your screen. That's going to be a couple hundred tuna. But if it's on zero to to, to, to 3,000, it's going to look like a speck, just a speck. So make sure you know how to use all your electronics. Look at this video more for the electronics part of this and just learn how to use all three of your electronics because every single one of those is going to change what you catch offshore. Number three, this one's going to be good. You're going to like this. Turn your VHF radio off. Well, Captain Dave, I like to listen to Channel 16 because I want to help save somebody. Look it, if I'm having a problem out in the ocean, please don't be the people that come save me. Let the Coast Guard do it or let Vessel Assist come. It's your day to be out fishing. Just stay fishing. Unless you see someone where the boat's on fire and they're waving their arms, then yeah, go over and help. But you really shouldn't be listening to Channel 16 to go out saving people. That's not your job. Also, there's two channels that you all listen to. You're, you're either going to listen to Channel 72 or Channel 65 when you're out there fishing. This is what I hear on the radio all the time. Anybody out there on the 209? And the guy will come back and say, Yeah, Skip, we're out here on the 209 and it's there's nothing going on. Have you guys ever been out on your boat and when you're catching fish wide open, do you ever say, stop, we gotta get on the radio and call all the boats that are out here and tell them to get over to our fish? No, the last thing you're gonna do is get on the radio and call somebody and tell them to come over. So why do you guys think that somebody else is gonna do that for you? If someone on the radio is telling you to get over there because they're catching fish, I'm gonna help you right now. It's probably not real. Here's a scenario. You're coming out of Dana Point Harbor. It's five o'clock in the morning. You just got a couple scoops of bait from the bait barge and you're going out to the 209. It's 200 degrees out of Dana Point and you're on your way to the 209 and you're blazing and you and your buddy are going because you did your research and you went on fish dope and you know exactly where the fish bit yesterday. So you're on your way to get out there to where they were. About 10 minutes into your trip, you hear someone on the radio Hey, Jimmy Joe, Jimmy Joe, you picking me up? You got me, Jimmy Joe? And then it second waits, and then, yeah, go ahead. Jimmy Joe, you got to get over here. They're biting wide open. Now, guys, it's still dark out. But this is going on on the radio, and they're telling you that it's on the 181, and it's the best bite they've ever seen in their life. And Jimmy Joe, you got to get over here. They're eating the paint off the bottom of the boat. And now you're looking at your buddy, and you're going, gosh. You know, those fish may have moved down. They were on the 209 yesterday. They might have moved down to the 181. What do you think? And your buddy goes, no, we're staying with our plan. We're going to the 209. Guy gets on the radio again. Jimmy Joe, Jimmy Joe, you got to get over here. We're almost out of bait. The boat's starting to sink. We got so many tuna on the boat. You got to get over here. You look at your buddy. You guys are still going 200 degrees to the 209. And you say, we can't take it anymore. So you change course and you're going 180 degrees down the coast to the 181. And you know who that is on the radio? Colin, it's me. I'm right behind you. I'm going to the 209. I don't want you to go to the 209. So I got on the radio and I put out this information that isn't even real. And I was able to drive your boat and send you down there. And off you went. And that's what happens every day, guys. Turn your VHF radio off.